Hello beautiful fish lovers and welcome to another episode of Puff Daddy Reef. Thanks for joining. If this is your first time, subscribe and hit that bell button. And if this isn't your first time, please like this video once, twice, three times, as many times as they'll let you mash that button. And also please leave a comment. Comments you leave on this video, I'll try to address as many as I can in the next video. On that note, my last video about my shark had a ton of comments, over 70 comments, so I will address some of those today. Also, I'll give you a quick tour of some other things in this tank. Maybe we'll feed it, maybe we won't. And I do have a sad story. I am breaking down this 20 gallon tank because I wanna focus on the big tank full time. So I'm gonna focus on that. Next week, look for a video on that 20 gallon tank on the whole life of this Innovative Marine Nouveau Fusion tank. I had that tank for three years, just about three years, and I loved every moment of it. It was a very good tank for me. Uh, probably the best value in a reef aquarium that I've ever had. So who are the real stars of the show of this channel? Well, of course, it's the fish, definitely the shark. This guy, from some of the comments, the little clownfish, I'm definitely gonna be moving him to the sump, um, but I think he's got maybe a month or two before the shark threatens him. Uh, I'm feeding the fish right now so you can see how they love to eat. I actually don't rinse uh, my frozen food when I feed it. I figure that for the filter feeding corals that I have and the clam, it's actually good um, for some of these juices. And then after I'm done feeding the fish a little, I do go through and target feed all of the corals. But here are the fish and they really like it. Oh wow, look at them all swimming about, having the greatest time. Most of the times I slow and stop the pumps when I feed just to make it easier for them to catch. Uh, but today they're just having a fun time racing around catching everything. So that is my fish. So let's go down to the sump. Down here we have the sump and this is what I I'm creating this little farm down here. Yes, it is a little coral farm. Look at all those zoanthids. I need to mount some of those corals in there. But this is actually a really nice place uh, to grow coral. I've got room to expand. And what I did is I put these marine pure balls all lined up on the bottom here. And then I took some egg crate and basically made this whole bottom panel, just a flat panel for frags to kind of maximize the space. And I have a ton of frags in there. We can look at some of them. A lot of zoas are starting to open it up in the morning and they look great. So I think this is going to be a good experiment. I'll definitely spruce that up. Also, these things, uh, these little trees here, they're still doing pretty good, the mangroves. And I have a light up here. This is my Kessel, but I'm going to augment it with some of these lights. Now these lights are the lights from my aquarium the 20 gallon tank that I'm taking down. These are the Kessel A80s and these are awesome. I really like them. Um, number one reason I like them is I think I'll actually be able to use them just about forever. They're very durable because they have zero moving parts. There is no fan. It's just one big heat sink. Uh, two of these lights is great for a 20 gallon tank that's gonna be mostly uh, zoanthids and maybe some LPS. And you can look at my videos, that tank, it. These, these lights grew things in that tank like wild. Now I would use them at 100%, but when you're buying lights, I feel like if you're buying lights and you can only use them up to 30%, you're probably oversizing your light. So these ones I would run at 100%, but it was great for that tank. I'm gonna put some in here, um, but because of the distance from the surface of the water and the spread of the lights, I'll definitely need to still supplement with this light up here and maybe something more. So that's what the sump looks like. And you might be wondering where all those rocks from this tank um, back here are going. These rocks are all down in the front of the tank. So they've deposited some materials down there and you need to kind of clean it up. But it's kind of, I don't know, I kind of like it. It's a little less minimalistic than before. The shark really, really loves to hide in and out these caves and look for food. I got a little anemone down there. And overall, I think this is going to be a... Cool way to go, but I'm not sure exactly uh, where I'm gonna move these rocks. I still would like to lift them up a little bit so I have the maximum amount of room for the shark. Okay, so let's get to your comments. I had a lot of really good ones. Uh, Spaghetti Killa uh, told me a story. We're gonna all has to have to listen to this. So apparently um, he got the same shark uh, with some live rock. Got the exact same shark. He started eating after two days. 
He used a metal stick to bring food down to the bottom. After a few weeks, he would smell it, jump out from under the rocks and swim up by itself. After like six to seven months, he started eating my fish during the night. I thought one by one, first the small ones and then also my yellow tang, WTF. I thought he had to be big before he eats such big fish. Nope. To be very careful, you got to have, so be very careful. The clownfish is the first to go. Uh oh, he's definitely going to the sump. Uh, they're so slow and too dumb during the night when the lights are off when they're sleeping. All right, thank you very much for that note and your experience. I'm also really interested to see your tank, so Spaghetti Killer, please post your video of your tank online. That would be really cool to see. Um, my question for you is, do you still have the shark or did you get rid of them? And were there any fish that actually survived? Lester's Reef wants me to stop with the clickbait thumbnails. Sorry, Lester. I'm not going to do it. Uh, Marine Take Journey, awesome. Daniel King, would love to have one someday. Well, thank you, Daniel King. Uh, follow me along on this journey and I will show you what it's like to have one. And maybe you'll learn that you don't want one. Maybe you'll learn that you do. We're going to see. Come on this experience with me. Let's see. Ewan S1R told me that this is a bad idea. This fish is not for reefs, but rather a fish tank. But you learn from your mistakes. Good luck. Yep, that's an experience that I hope I'll have. If this was a huge mistake, hopefully I'll learn from it. But one thing about my reef keeping journey, I've been in the hobby about five years. I definitely wanted something different. I definitely wanted a challenge. And so this challenge is to see if I can keep a reef tank with a shark to find out what fish and what corals are compatible with it, if anything. And so join me on this journey and hopefully you will learn from my mistakes and together we will understand what makes this fish not reef compatible and what makes it and what it actually is compatible with. Uh, so he'll eat any fish that fits in his mouth, that's true, especially when they're asleep. Yep, that's a big problem and as we learned from the other reader, um, maybe they will eat fish that won't fit into their mouth. We have a lot of other people along for the ride, some already um, saying their condolences for the clownfish. Uh, St. Nova is congratulating me on my pet lizard. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> he says, if I brought that bad boy into my house, my wife would reach into the tank and hit it with a shoe. Well, let's hope that that does not happen to my fish. Uh, nitrate factor, LOL. Uh, yep. I think he is definitely going to be a nitrate factory. I'm going to be doing lots of experiments. I'll be giving you test measurements on the tank on how much nitrates that we're actually producing. And we'll look into different ways to reduce the nitrates. Uh, oh, there are a lot of questions about acclimation and quarantine. And so there's too many comments to read those um, on each one. But a lot of people noted how first I didn't quarantine this fish. Part of the reason I didn't quarantine it is this fish is captive bred um, so it hasn't been in the wild and one of the m primary parasites for epaulette sharks are these types of isopods that basically feed off their blood they kind of infest their gills and different things but because it's captive bred it's not going to have those also many fish diseases also aren't compatible with shark diseases um, and i don't have any other sharks already in here so he's not going to infect any sharks and this is really a shark tank to me, so the focus is on the health of the shark. Uh, ultimately, it is always best to put the fish in quarantine. Um, for sharks, you want to avoid copper, but a smaller tank where you can observe them and offer them some foods to see what they will eat and what they'll accept and get them a little more comfortable is often a good idea. For a shark this size, I think a cycled 20 gallon tank would be a good size for observation. Shark is very small. Um, and then after a period of observation of maybe a month, maybe you'd want to put them in the tank. Uh, for me, I did not have a tank that was as stable that I trusted as much as this tank. And ultimately because the focus was on the health of the shark and less so the health of the other critters in the tank, because this is pretty much this is all I'm focused on is the shark. I took the risk and put them in the tank. 
and so far he's doing well. I do kind of wish it was a little easier to get food to him, especially in those early days. It took about four days to get him to eat. I've actually had the shark a month now. It took me a while to get that video up, but now he's eating um, very consistently. Uh, so on the other note, um, we talked about quarantine, acclimation. There's a lot of different ways to acclimate the fish. Uh, you can drip acclimate. You can temperature acclimate. The biggest thing is, is you want to make sure that the temperatures are as close to each other when you put them in. An additional step I could have done after drip acclimating is then re-putting the fish in there and helping it acclimate again. There's also some concern that some water from the aquarium store might have got into my tank. Honestly, it's 100%, it's nearly impossible without an intermediate quarantine or some other tank to actually prevent all the water from the animal from getting into the tank because they're they're actually made of water and they you know sticks to their body and stuff so without an observation or an intermediate step like a quarantine um, there's really no way I could keep all that water out of my tank but I do trust the supplier um, ORA and in this case it was a risk that was worth taking. I have a lot of comments on how beautiful the shark is I really agree this is a beautiful fish um, discus keeper made the comment that the fish is stunning and I apologize if I call this shark a fish. I do understand that it is a shark, not a fish. And it is a cart cartilaginous animal. Someone made a suggestion about having a round tank. Uh, for most of the swimming, free swimming sharks, you would like round corners, maybe even a completely round swimming pool where they can go around in circles. Uh, for benthic sharks or sharks that live on the bottom of the water that crawl, they actually are found in tide pools and sharp corners and ledges between rocks all the time. And they're not generating a lot of speed swimming, so they're not going to run into corners. They love tight spaces. They love corners. For these types of sharks, the corners are not a problem. All right, thank you very much. That was a few of the questions. If you have any other questions for me on the shark, please comment below. But really what I want you to, to comment in this video is name ideas for the shark. I definitely need awesome name ideas. So please leave some name ideas for this shark in the comments. He's a male shark, so male names or I don't know, it doesn't have to be male names. It could be any type of name. You could name them golf ball. Maybe that's a good name for a shark. I don't know, but leave a comment below. I'll be sure to read those off in the next video. Thank you very much for joining me today on Puff Daddy Reef. Happy reefing and have a great week.